next thing that you want to look at is how much space is there in your hive. Now, these are Langstroth hives, and so you're sort of um, fixed to the 10 frame per box um, set, but what we want to do as we work in our top our hive is we're going to allow the bees to have a couple more top bars to build out than, um, than they've already done so that they don't have too much space. Imagine, you know, it's like a first time home buyer coming in and buying a, a massive home and they've never managed all the systems and everything. So it's too much to clean, it's too much to heat, it's too much to cool, it's too much to protect from predators. So the balance of giving your bees an adequate amount of space is certainly a cross between an art and a science. If you do not provide them with enough space early enough, then you put yourself in the position of encouraging your bees to swarm, which um, is less than favorable because you lose about 50% of your population as well as 50% of your stores. So. Um, uh, learning how to have enough space but not too much is something that you'll learn over time. I want to encourage you if you are able to go into the beehives of other beekeepers that you might know, um, take advantage of opportunities to do inspections in public hives so that you can start to talk with other beekeepers about how much space is too much space. So when we start our three pound package, when our bees arrive, we will be giving them five top bars to start. So space is, it's a delicate balance, but um, really contributes to hive health as you learn to effectively manage it. The next aspect of your inspection that you want to focus on is the stores. Now, when you start a new hive and you're working in a top bar situation, you won't even have any comb. So one of the first steps is getting uh, or watching that your bees are building out adequate comb, which means that they have enough um, flow coming in so that they convert the honey. It's eight pounds of honey to a pound of wax. So wax is a very, um, resource intensive um, structural elements of the hive so it should not be discarded lightly so first we're watching that they're building out adequate amounts of comb and then we look and see what are they putting in the comb so the picture that we have for you here on the upper right hand is um is quite full um of of bees and wax and honey healthy brood. So in this area here, this is all capped honey. And um, this has been stored and the excess water has been evaporated off. And it's been capped with that heavy wax coating, which means the bees anticipate not needing that until winter. So this is a wonderful sign in the hive whenever there's cap storage, that means that they're bringing in um, they're enough to save. Another thing that I wanna show you is we talked about healthy brood. This area here of our comb, this is all worker brood. Another example of worker brood, um, a little closer up is, is right here. This is that, pupated cap that I talked about that you'll see um, when your bees uh, are ready to go through their metamorphosis and grow, grow their wings. So you will also notice on this slide um, this kind of puffy dome looking brood and there's, there's one here but if you look at it you notice the difference between that brood and the brood next to it, which is flatter when it's capped, that's drone brood. And that accounts for the, the larger abdomen and the broader 
broader thorax and bigger head that the male bees have. So that is a sign of beautiful, healthy brood. Um, next to the brood, as I said, we'll watch the queen where she goes in her pattern of laying eggs. If you notice the little white curls that are in the bottom of those cells, that is the larva stage. And that's the stage when the nurse bees are, are feeding um, their little sisters there. So when you see the larva that looks like that and it's pearly white and it, the hive smells fresh, um, that's a wonderful sign. If, if you have really good eyes and you can see down in these cells, if you look into the bottom of them, you can see that little white rice shape that I said. Um, you'll want to notice that your eggs are stuck there in the bottom of the middle of your cell. Sometimes if you see an egg attached on the side, that's an indication of a laying worker, which is a uh, um, a problem that happens when you're hopelessly queenless that we won't go into today, but um, if you see your, your egg, anything other than in the bottom, in the middle of the cell, you may have a problem. And then finally, when you're looking for stores, you want to see frames of capped, finished honey. And um, that means that they have had so much nectar that they have been able to bring in, that they have been able to evaporate it off and store it for when they need it in winter. So I want to show you some examples, some examples of comb that came out of hives. This is what top bar comb looks like. They kind of finish it on their own on the side because it doesn't have that rectangular wood that's binding it in. And you can see some of the packed pollen still in these cells. Um, this, this piece of comb can be melted down and it becomes uh, beeswax that's been refined. Um, here's another example of real comb. And again, the, the way that the bees will um, knit up their bottom and sides is significantly different when allowed to do so in their own way when they are drawing from the top bar hive, which is part of the reason why I've become such an advocate of the top bar method, um, especially for backyard beekeepers. So um, this is another example. And I want to show you one of the things that I like to talk about when we're doing the inspection is remember that this is your bees home and you are a guest there. And while you may be a little bit nervous about the visitors that you're, you know, holding residence in your yard, I want to encourage you to see your inspection as a visit to maybe like a pet and also think in terms of being very gentle in the hive. Every time you crush a bee, if you're working too fast or nervously or fumbling in your hive, you're crushing a venom sac. And when venom sacs are crushed, that creates the pheromone response that we talked about where the, the bees will think that there is something wrong because their sisters are stinging. And if their sisters are stinging, is there something that they maybe need to sting as well? So be very gentle when you go into the hive. That's the use of the hive tool. You'll see my, my frames here um, run parallel to each other. And once the bees are living inside, they will have really mucked it up with a good amount of propolis. That's a hive product that's very waxy and resiny and it's the bees medicine. So it's very important, but it makes it a little bit different for the bee, difficult for the beekeepers. So we'll take our tool or paint scraper, whatever it is that you're using, pocket knife maybe, and you stick it down in between the frames to break that propolis seal and just go ever so gently and slowly and try to keep yourself in the most calm zen state that you can. And that will make your inspections as enjoyable as possible for not just you, but also the bees. 
so you'll you'll pull one of your frames forward and then you lift it straight up now this is this is a langstroth style high or frame so when we have a top bar frame we will only hold it in such a way that the comb is not horizontal if you hold your top bear combs in this way the weight of the honey and the wax will cause it to break so we want to hold our top bar frames in this way and that's when we'll inspect um, our brood pattern do we see eggs do we see good coverage of bees um, and then also wanted to share with you so this is oh this is a full capped frame of honey. This could just be taken into the kitchen and scraped onto a strainer. It's probably a good 10 to 12 pounds, um, which makes part, you know, part of the reason why um, Langstroth beekeeping, I think is so impractical for normal people because the boxes get to be over a hundred pounds each. So, just when you're in your hive, try and remember that this is a hobby. This is something that you're doing for fun. And while at first we sometimes can be a little bit nervous, um, that we just need to keep ourselves as calm as possible. So in the event that you are not dealing with a situation where you've got great stores, let's go ahead and talk about supplemental feeding.